Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, December the 16th. Uh, glad to be back at the house of the Lord. Thankful for all those who tune in to watch us on this Facebook Live broadcast service. I hope we can be a blessing to you. hope we can uh, share God's word with this world. And uh, certainly want to honor and glorify the Lord while we're here and everything we do. Um, we have a great Missionary Baptist Church, 4875 East Dunbar Road. Uh, we welcome you out with us Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for Sunday school. Sunday morning at 11 a.m. right now for church. We usually have a Sunday evening service, but right now we're just doing Facebook broadcasts uh, due to the ongoing pandemic, the year-long pandemic that just eggs on and on. We're just going to, you know, kind of ride in this wave. But anyway, and then here we are on Wednesday nights at 7, always, if you can't be with us at church. We want to see you at church, but if you can't, it's good to see you here. We'll sing a few songs. We'll start a word of prayer. We'll get right into the service. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, once again we come before you, bow an arm worthy, head as long as we can. Thanking you, God, for this another day and another privilege to be at your house. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to stand and do something for you. We pray, Lord God, that we could be a blessing to someone. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand. And we hope, Lord God, as we take this opportunity, that we could be a strength for someone who might need it. Most of all, Lord, that we could just uh, preach your word to this lost and dying world. Lord, somebody who might not be saved, that they would hear it and believe before it's too late. Lord, as the world becomes darker and darker, help us, Lord, that our light would shine in this lost and dying world. And that people would see Jesus in our life and have a desire to have a relationship with you. Lord God, we pray for those who are sick and shut in. Pray for those who can't get out to church or really get out anywhere, Lord. There's so many who are sick and suffering right now. We just ask, Lord God, your hand of mercy and blessing be upon them. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, and we ask these favors the only way we can. In Jesus' name, amen.
requested that we sing this one, so we'll try it. There's been times in my life I have doubted when Satan asked me if I'm saved. But with faith in whom I've trusted and believed in, I have peace that the world can't take away. I found joy in him that's ever shot anyway. <clears throat> Everybody does this song better than I do. I can't harmonize, so if I sing a song, Beth has to harmonize with me, and I, I don't have the ability to harmonize, so I just have to stand here when she sings. So. <clears throat> it is a Oh, but I'm not afraid. 
the other part. Well, certainly we're thankful to be able to stand and do anything in the name of the Lord. And uh, Elsie, I know I'm not uh, worthy to stand up here this evening or any day and uh, divide the, rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, but uh, I'm thankful that the Lord uh, is worthy. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our thanks. He's worthy of all honor and glory that we could give him, and more so even than that. And uh, I just wish that this, uh, these old lips of clay would praise God better than they do. Uh, but we do want to give God glory, and we want to uh, mind his spirit tonight. And uh, 
I tell you what, I'm pretty ignorant about a lot of things uh, when it comes to the Bible, and really just about most things. But uh, I'm thankful that the Lord is not. He's all-knowing. But Elsie, I'm just, uh, I got just enough sense to uh, follow the Lord or try to when he says to do something. And so if, it, if he's in it, it'll be good. And if he's not, it don't matter what we do. It, it won't be worth, worth nothing. But uh, before we were started the video tonight, uh, EJ was asking me some questions. And it made me think of this scripture. And uh, I'd like to read it. Uh, the closer we got to 7 o'clock, the more evident it became that I would have to stand and preach tonight. Uh, I was looking forward to uh, Gary maybe preaching tonight, or maybe J.C. would straggle in here, or Nathan, or any preacher in the county maybe just led to be over here. But, uh, but we'll just, uh, it's Gary's birthday. If Gary sees this, happy birthday, Gary. And uh, hopefully you're having a good birthday. But uh, we're here, and we'll do the best we can, and the Lord will have to do the rest. It means he'll have to do all of this. The best we got is not very good. We were talking about being baptized, and I had this thought on my heart anyway, and we're going to read this scripture. It's some of the, the most, uh, uh, the most known scripture. And uh, it's in the 8th chapter of the book of Acts, and we're going to read the rest of the chapter. Maybe not all, we're going to read about 10 or 12 verses. We'll read through it quick, just try to be uh, as fast as we can. And it says this, it says, we'll start in the 26th verse. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south, unto the way that going down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. And then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, saying, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? of himself or some other man. <clears throat> and then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all cities till he came to Caesarea. And that's a lot more reading than what I usually ever do, but uh, it, I just wanted to make sure we covered it all. And there's a lot of preachers in the world that preach the scripture better than I can. Uh, most of them do. But uh, I was thinking about this, and this is a well-known story to those that have been in church any amount of time or have read, do any reading in their Bible. And uh, it's a great illustration, not really so much a baptism, L.C. We go to Evergreen Acres Missionary Baptist Church. We're a Baptist church. John was called the Baptist because he baptized uh, but not really so much a baptism, but what it required for someone uh, to be baptized. And uh, not just water. It's not just the ability to go down into the water and to dip you and to, to dunk you or to sprinkle you or to shake you around or scrub you or whatever they try, would try to do. But it's what happens before uh, you get into that water. And so the eunuch is there. Philip had been preaching a revival in Samaria. There was many that were believing, and they, 
uh, God had sent him there to preach. The Spirit of the Lord had led him. And, uh, and so he went there and he was obedient to God's Spirit and he was preaching. And then God called him away and he put him in a desert place. And I tell you that uh, it seems like a lot of times in our life that we find ourselves uh, that when we're trying to do what God wants us to do, that uh, it's up and it's down. There's mountains and there's valleys. And I tell you, I worry about uh, folks that spend their uh, entire life and uh, try to pretend like they're on the mountain all the time, LC. They, uh, I'm not, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't spend much time on the mountain. But it seems like I remember the valleys more so than I remember the mountaintops. And uh, and there's good times and there's bad times. And the rain, it falls, the Bible says, I'm, I'm the just and the unjust alike. We find ourselves at times that, uh, that it seems that everything's going our way and the cards we're being dealt are, are a good hand to play. And then it seems like it's just a little while and, uh, and everything we thought we had going for us changes. And that uh, is the way that it is. But we just got to trust the Lord. And that uh, is what Philip did. Philip was there. He was preaching revival. And that uh, people were believing. They were being saved. They were uh, understanding what he was saying. And God called him away and sent him to a place that, uh, that was a desert place. And L.C., I tell you what, he uh, was out there and it just so happened. I tell you that uh, it wasn't chance, but God caused Philip to cross the, uh, this. Ethiopian's path and I'm thankful I just want to stop there and say that, uh, that I'm thankful for the people in my life that God has uh, sent to cross my path I'll see uh, you know if I, you put all them people in a room uh, the people that have been a blessing to me over the years uh, have been a help to me in my spiritual life I, uh, I might not have ever picked that group out of a, a room of people to say that, uh, that they would mean something to me or they would uh, be a strength to me or a help to me or a guide or a help, but, uh, but I'm thankful that God knows what he's doing and he sent Philip that way that, uh, that that Ethiopian would hear the word of God. And I'm thankful for them who are sent in the name of the Lord and led of his spirit. I'm thankful for them who come and preach Jesus. I'm thankful for them who stood and preached. Uh, Jesus was the way the night that I needed to hear and to believe and be saved. Because I tell you what, any minute today, our some prosperity gospel. They're preaching some gospel about changing this world. I'm telling you this much right now, there's nothing I'm going to change this world we're living in. I'll see man is wicked. The Bible says God made man perfect and upright, but he has sought out many inventions. I tell you what, a man's heart desires to do evil, and this world ain't going to get no better. There's some that are preaching, let's change this world. But I'm whatever they want. Uh, I want to hear that preaching about Jesus. Uh, I'll see the Bible says the preaching of the cross uh, is to them that perish foolishness. Uh, but unto us which are saved, it's the power of God. Uh, and thank God that it is. I tell you what, uh, I'm glad to stand and say I fell uh, and I've been a partaker of that power. Uh, that's the kind of power that can get you out of that pew uh, and draw you to an altar of prayer. Uh, and I'm thankful one night that I went uh, and I knelt down and asked God to forgive me of my sins. And I'll tell you what, I don't deserve, uh, listen, to call heaven my home. But because I believe in Jesus, I'll see heaven is my home. Thank God that it is. But God sent Philip. I tell you what, I don't want to be the one that goes doing anything on my own account or of my own accord. I want to just make sure I'm following Jesus. Because oh, I tell you what, when you follow Jesus... When you're led of the Spirit, L.C., I tell you what, oh, that's when the good things happen, isn't it? But when you're led of man, I tell you what, that's when things start to fall apart, isn't it? Oh, we find those in the Bible oh, who were led of God, and I tell you what, even though their paths sometimes seem like it was the hard way to row or the hard way to go, I tell you what, them that followed God and trusted in Him, who were led of His Spirit, I tell you, in the end, Oh, they were better off for it. And we see them in the Bible, L.C. Oh, listen, who followed their own, who followed their self, who followed after the flesh and after their own desires. And I tell you what, the end of them people is not a good one. The Bible says.
says that even the wicked are reserved to the day of judgment. Oh, listen, you might think you're getting away with some things in this world, but I'm telling you this much right now. Oh, there's a record kept of our life, and man will give an account of every idle word that ever comes out of his mouth. Each and every one of us, you say, I don't believe it don't make a difference. It doesn't change what God's way is. Whether we believe it or not, it's the truth. God is true and every man is a liar. And we'll all face that judgment seat. And I'm giving account of our lives. And the only difference that's going to be is whether or not we believe and trust in Jesus. It makes me think, oh, listen, of Jacob when he was there and he was dwelling with Laban. And I think ten times with Laban changed his wages, didn't he, L.C.? Uh, for his daughter, yes, he did. He tricked him and changed him. He did everything he could uh, because Laban was blessed by Jacob's presence. But Jacob trusted in God, didn't he? I tell you what, he had a struggle sometimes. He, he struggled sometimes uh, to do what was right. But I'll tell you what, uh, listen, he was there. He didn't have nothing. Uh, and he told Laban, he said, I tell you what, uh, he said, I, I tell you what, he said, when we go out and we start breeding the sheep. Oh, uh, listen, they begin, they, they're coming in. Oh, uh, listen, they begin to give birth. I tell you what, uh, you go ahead and keep all the ones that look good and give me them ones that are speckled and give me them ones that are bristled, them ones that don't look, that look like they ain't worth nothing. I tell you what, you just give me that stuff that nobody wants. You give me that stuff you were going to discard anyway. Uh, you give me them that you were going to cut out of the flock. And I tell you what, uh, and you keep the good stuff. And Elsie, I tell you, that Jacob believed God, didn't he? It was a sign of trust. And you know something? Uh, God began to bless Jacob. And I tell you what, Laban found out down the way. Uh, he thought he was getting a good deal, didn't he? There's a lot of people today think they're getting a good deal in this old world we're living in. But Laban found out later on that it's them who trust in God who will receive the blessings. It's them who trust in God uh, that will see prosperity. I tell you what, I may never be a rich man and nobody may ever know my name in this world, but Jesus knows my name and he wrote it in heaven. And I tell you, when all the chips are counted, I'll come out on top. Oh, listen, Philip, he believed God. He trusted God. He followed his spirit and he went down the way and even though it was a desert place, you see how God was working on both ends. Oh, listen, he didn't just go over there. Oh, listen, there's some trying to force it. I'm not here to force anything. Oh, God doesn't force us to believe. But I'll see, I'll tell you what, he works on both ends, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, listen, Philip was there to preach. And it just so happened he forgot his Bible at home. But it didn't matter because the Ethiopian had one he could use, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did. And so when he got up there, he asked him to sit with him. And I'll tell you what, that Ethiopian was trying to understand up here. He had just been to Jerusalem to worship. I tell you what, you may go to church all your life. Oh, there's so many people clinging to the church. And I tell you what, church is a good thing. I love the old church. And I can't wait till everybody's back together again. Oh, listen, I hope you can either, but I tell you what, oh, this Ethiopian had just been in Jerusalem worshiping God. And I tell you what, I'll see he still lacked something, didn't he? Oh, I tell you what, he lacked one thing. He lacked something. He didn't understand what he was doing. I tell you what, you ain't just going to follow God ignorantly. You'll have to choose God. You'll have to set your heart on it. You'll have to decide that that's what you're going to do. He was there and he was reading from where Isaiah said. Isaiah was talking about Jesus being crucified and Philip wasn't. He didn't want to talk about sheep. He didn't want to talk about shearing sheep. He wanted to talk about Jesus. That's what's going to make the difference. I tell you what, I could stand up here and give you some story about how they used to shear sheep or how they used to speak Hebrew or what it meant to be in Jerusalem. And if that's what God told me to say, I would. But I'll tell you what will change your life is the preaching of Jesus and him on a cross. Because if you don't believe in what Jesus did at the 
cross, then you ain't doing nothing when it comes to worshiping God. Philip opened his mouth, same place, and preached Jesus to him. They went on their way. They're in a desert place. And it says they came into a certain water. The eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? I tell you what. Oh, listen, God makes a way, don't he? They're in a desert place. Ain't that right, LC? Oh, listen, and we go back and we read. Oh, listen. Oh, we find an end to another in a verse. Oh, listen, where God sent him away. Oh, listen, he was in a desert place, wasn't he? Oh, it says in the 26th verse that he sent him south to the way that goeth down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. Ain't that what it says? That's what it says in my Bible. It's desert. I tell you what, I've never been there. I've never even looked at it on a map. Uh, the Bible says it's desert, and that's good enough for me. But they were going on down the way. God was working his way, wasn't he, LC? The way only God can. He said, here's water. What hinders me to be baptized? I tell you what, that Ethiopian eunuch had a desire uh, to be a part of something that he knew was real. He had a desire to be a part of something that he knew, uh, listen, was different than anything he could get in this world, anything he could have found in Jerusalem. Philip was talking about that real deal. And I'll tell you what I'll see. Philip told him the truth, didn't he? He didn't tiptoe around his feelings, did he? He didn't say, well, if you want to get baptized, let's just go. I'll baptize you. Uh, whatever you want. I just don't want to hurt your feelings. Philip in the eye and said, if thou believest, thou mayest. And listen, that Ethiopian confessed that he believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. I tell you what the Bible says, Romans 10, 9, and 10. If thou wilt believe with the heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. I tell you what, listen to me today. Brother, if you want to have the real thing. you got to believe in here and confess it here. That's what God's looking for. Those who believe in their heart and confess with their mouth. That Ethiopian said, I believe. Philip said, all right, stop the chariot. Stop the chariot. We got nowhere else to go. LC, nothing mattered at that point, did it? But they went down into the water and he baptized him there. And I tell you what, he baptized him and he was on his way, wasn't he? Oh, uh, listen, there's some that have done something in the name of the Lord, and I'm not discrediting it one bit, but they've done one thing for God in their whole life, and they've just retired. They're done. Well, I let I, I took my children to church. That's enough. Uh, listen, I, I, I tell you what I did. I gave some money to the church, and that's enough. I tell you what, those are good things. The church has to pay your bills. Uh, your children need to be brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and I tell you what, there's a good. that's a good place for church to be in, you know. Uh, listen, people will say I want my kids to play sports uh, because I think it helps them out. I want my kids to be in a club uh, because I think it helps them out. I want my kids to deal with this at school. I think it helps them out. I tell you what, if you want to do something for your kids, uh, you'll raise them up in church and fear in the Lord. Ain't that right, LC? Because that's something that'll stick with them for life. The Bible says that we would train up a child and the way he would go, he should go that when he was old, he wouldn't depart from it. God told Moses how to write the precepts on the, on the head of his door and to hang them about his neck and to talk about him with his children when he rose up in the morning and when he laid down at night. I tell you what, there's a lot of things we can give our children in this world, but we can't give them nothing better than Jesus and God's word. Oh, listen, Philip, he baptized him. And you know what, Elsie? He was up and he was gone. He was somewhere else, wasn't he? I tell you what, we all have a, we all have a work to do. And there's no place to quit. And whatever you're doing right now, if it ain't working for God, uh, it's time to get up and get on the way. It's time to get up and get with it. Uh, get on the way for where God wants you to be. Because I tell you what, it wasn't enough just for Philip to preach to this eunuch. He could have quit in Samaria, couldn't he? I tell you what, well, you know, I did preach that revival in Samaria. Um, and they just rest on their laurels, don't they, LC? Well, I did take my kids to church for a while. I did the best I can. God knows my heart. I tell you what, you can pull that with me. It don't make one bit of difference. But you ain't going to pull that with God. We all have a work.
work to do in God's family, it's time to do it. Paul told the Corinthians it was now time to awake out of sleep. It was high past time to get up and to get on the way. And I tell you, that is true today. And listen, I tell you, this eunuch, what did he do? Uh, he had believed in his heart. He had been baptized. And he went on his way rejoicing. I tell you what, this world looks like it's glim, doesn't it? You know why? Because it is. It's an awful place to be sometimes. Evil is all around us. People are bad to one another. Everything you hear, you can't believe. But I tell you what, this Ethiopian eunuch, he rejoiced as he went on his way. Because I tell you what else, see, when you've got Jesus in your heart, it'll change you, that person you were. Before you believed and confessed, it's handed away. And that new man's put on. I tell you what, if you're a child of God, you ought to be able to rejoice in the name of the Lord. And if you're not, Satan's stolen your joy. And I tell you what, it's time to kick him down and take it back. Oh, listen, Christians have much to rejoice about. God's still on the throne. He still loves his people. He's still coming back for his church. I tell you what, he still leads us and guides us. He still helps us when we ask him for help. Elsie, I tell you what, he blesses us. God's good to us, ain't he? There's much to rejoice about. I tell you what, I want to go on my way rejoicing. Not complaining, not grumbling, not with my head held low. I want to look up because I know my redemption draws nigh. I tell you what, this Ethiopian eunuch went his way. You know what? He still had a job to do, didn't he? He still had somewhere to be. He still had things to do. Uh, listen, he still had to be a part of this world. But I tell you what, as God's children, uh, we're in this world and we're not supposed to be of it, LC. We're supposed to be a peculiar people. And I tell you what, this man's job, uh, he sacrificed a lot to have this job, but he didn't choose it either. Uh, he was a eunuch. He, that's what it meant. He was a eunuch. Uh, you know what? The, the government decided to take away all his other desires. That's what they did to him so he could carry money around for people that were rich. But you know what? He didn't sit around and complain about his situation. He didn't sit around and complain about things he couldn't change. He went on his way rejoicing because Jesus had saved his soul. And you know what, Elsie? That ought to be enough for you and I. We ought to be able to rejoice in the fact that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Bible says, Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but yea, rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If I have anything to rejoice in today, it's that my name is written down. Oh, listen, we appreciate your attention this evening. Oh, we hope that we've been a blessing to you. We hope most of all that there's a time in your life where you can say right there, oh, listen, I tell you what, faith, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what it says. It says, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear unless they preach? How can they preach unless they be sent? I tell you what, that's, that scripture summed up in this verse, these verses right here. Philip was sin of God. He preached the word of God. This Ethiopian, he heard the word of God. He believed in God. And he called on the name of God when he said, I believe Jesus is the son of God. I tell you what, all that's wrapped up right here, that's what you've got to do. Oh, uh, listen, God sends people past us. He sends people our way uh, that tell us of God's goodness, of his word, uh, that they spread the gospel to us. And I tell you what, everyone will be given an opportunity uh, to believe before it's too late. And I hope and pray uh, that you can say that you believe. Oh, uh, listen, that God sent someone your way. You heard the word of God. You believed it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. If you have, you should be rejoicing. If you haven't, I tell you what, brother, your only hope is in Jesus. And that's what you've got to look to. We appreciate your attention tonight. We want to invite you to church again. You're welcome to be with us. If you can't be with us, you can join us right here on the Facebook Live videos. We love you. God bless you. If we don't see you before, we'll see you next Wednesday night, 7 o'clock.